Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 300 and, um, 341. Each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions uh, community uh, uh, on uh, Facebook. It's known as the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, and this week we also are fielding one question from Twitter. All right, with us tonight we have uh, Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he's also a Google product expert on the uh, uh, AdSense uh, community. Masataki uh, resides in Wimbledon, uh, um, a suburb of London uh, in the UK. And um, uh, not too far from him is Tim. Tim is about 100 miles north of London. Uh, Tim is CEO of onlineownership.com uh, and uh, he's a Google product expert um, on the um, um, Google My Business community. Rob Mars is back with us tonight. Uh, Rob um, uh, for helped uh, uh, particularly in the early stages of Dumb SEO questions and uh, um, I hope uh, he's able to spend more time with us. But anyway, Rob is with us tonight. Um, Rob is um, an AdWords aficionado based in the Netherlands. And uh, he uh, um, is a Google product expert. I've just got to click this line because my memory is so bad. Um, webmasters slash... Um, oh, um, <laughs> AdSense, is it? Um, and um, SC, what, what's SC, Rob? I should, I should know. Search Console. Search Console. And they, they've got a community for that now. No, but Webmasters isn't the name anymore. It's Search Console. It was Webmasters Tools and it's now Search Console. I thought I made it clearer, but I didn't, obvious. Well, look, it's not that. It's just that I, I, I really uh, haven't, uh, I, 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 I probably haven't, should have done my homework. All right. Um, so who, who haven't we mentioned? Um, let me see, Masataki, Rob, Tim, Cap we're, all, we're all mentioned. Okay, so we have uh, 10 questions tonight. Let's um, have a look at um, the first one. Um, first one is from uh, Mike Cook. By the way, guys, does the screen look the way it normally should? I'm, I'm not sure if I did the setup properly. Yeah, yeah it's all right. Thank you, Tim. Um, our first question is titled, um, GWM crawl is going up a lot. Google, Googlebot crawl, I guess. Um, he said, I have a question. A site that in Google, GWM crawl is going up a lot. Um, speed downloading the page looks really good in Google Webmaster Tools. Um, but everywhere else, uh, it is slow. How is this done? I can't get my head around it. Uh, any ideas? Welcome. Uh, it's from Mike Cook. Don't fight over it, guys. Hang on. So... So his crawl, the crawl rate's increasing. The page speed is good. 
but everywhere else it is slow. Uh, what? what um... <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know what he means. Where everywhere else is slow. Um, I, I think he means other tools to measure the speed of his web pages. I assume that. Yeah, or the actual page load, sort of with the um, if it, entities, images, JavaScript execution, etc., etc., etc. Not just purely downloading the file. Yeah. Well, if, if Google Search Console tells you it's fast enough, that doesn't mean that it's fast enough always. Uh, it, it's not yes or no. It, and if all other speed test tools give him the impression his site loads slow, then most likely people will also experience that the pages load slow and you should do something about it even if google search control tells you it's fast because it doesn't matter that much well, it matters of course but it's more important that your visitors feel it's fast and fast enough to stay on it than that google webmaster tools says it's fast and people leave because it's not fast enough in reality so he could be looking at those other speed tests tools and learn from them where he could make his speed faster does that make Thank sense you. go ahead i was done yeah, I think I spoke over the top of somebody else. Okay. <laughs> now, so I would use something like webpagetest.org to see how your page, you know, actual page loads and see where there are scopes for improvement. I agree. Yeah, um, I, I think a lot of people fall down in that they, they uh, automatically assume that what's in um, Google Webmaster Tools reports is uh, um, is accurate um, and, and um, fully extent. It, it's not. Um, it, it's a representative sample of data. It's more bread and circuses to distract you from the... Uh, um opportunity of gaming google i think um i think if they give us enough uh, things to play with to keep ourselves amused uh, we won't um, look and see the obvious um who would know um but anyway that's my uh, opinion um rob i, I think this is a, a good an and Masataki, a good answer for uh, mr cook Mike, um, thank you for your question, and uh, I hope uh, it gives you the answer you're looking for. All right, let's look at uh, number two on our run list. It's from Sandra Pym. It's two languages in one site is the title. Sandra said, um, hello, everyone. I have a website that has been written in English, but on the blog page we write in Thai. Uh, is that bad for search engine optimization? Uh, um, they are both the blog and the uh, website are in the same niche. Uh, okay, so the website, I don't know what your product is or whatever that site is. Uh, Um, so essentially, let's say your main site is all in English, and then on your blog you write in Thai. Um, so I'm a bit confused as to why you do that. 
uh, assuming that your main yeah. site is what the where where you know you know is the, the sole intention of the business, whether it be a a hotel or whether it be a B two B or a, even a I don't know pink fluffy elephant manufacturing business. Um, I would, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very confused as to why you would do that. Um, you know, if your blog is in Thai, you're generally targeting Thai readers. If your website is in English, you're generally targeting English readers. So what's the difference? Like, I mean, it's almost as if you're targeting two different customer bases, but don't the people that read your blog, aren't you, aren't, aren't you intending to attract them? But then when you send them to a product page on the website, it's in English. Uh, I'm just very confused by that. Yeah. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I just think you're going, you can, you, I think you need to kind of understand who you're targeting for. I mean, if if your readers and your audience is are Thai, but your website's in English, I would consider changing that or changing those pages into Thai, or creating Thai versions of those and href lang it. But I fail to see if you're continually updating or marketing to Thai people via the blog, but your business is in English. I just, I, I just see a complete disconnect. Yeah, I think one thing to avoid is mixing languages on the same page. And that, that's sort of the big thing to avoid. Um, like Tim said, if you are targeting two different audiences, English speakers and Thai speakers, then, you know, there should be a way to switch from one version to the other, perhaps. And perhaps there should be equivalence of content between the two language versions. Um, you could have different content for different languages. I don't think that's uh, in itself problematic. I think it becomes um, confusing to visitors when you start to mix languages in the same section on the same page so if i were you i would whether that's sort of the website blog content whatever that may be i would make sure that one is squarely catered at english speakers and the other for thai speakers um you know, that should be visually different um architecturally probably different i it doesn't have to be on a separate subdomain. Um, I, I think you can do that um, as a subdirectory. Um, but I think, um, yeah, yeah, gosh, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, uh, two languages in one site, not an issue in itself mixing two languages on the same page, that's problematic. I think it boils down to that. Thank you, Mr. Taki. All right, uh, I, I think um, we can move on now from uh, number two, Sandra Pim. Uh, I uh, thank you for your question. And um, let me thank people like Tarek Danaji, uh, and Michael Martinez and so on, people that, who answer questions uh, on uh, our uh, Facebook group through the week. Kelly Butler um, um, asked the question, um, which is uh, has a headline of search engine results page snippet is prefaced by grey text. Um, Kelly goes on to say, uh, uh, doing uh, search engine optimization work for a client and their Google results snippet is prefaced by grey text 
that says results 12-18. I'm assuming this is an ideal. Uh, any idea where this is coming from? Uh, what should I do? Thanks. Um, I saw the image of that, but to be honest, I never dived in. <laughs> um, I, I didn't even look what was on the page um, or if it had any weird uh, structured data, um, you know, just being pulled in via WordPress or, or whatever. Um, but I would certainly look at that. It, it'll be it, it'll be in there somewhere. Um, I can't even remember what the query was. What is uh, what does Michael say there? I think he might have looked at it. Uh, he asked, "Is it a sports site?" It looks like. Yeah, there's something in there. So, got a search action. Yeah, it's something to do with the, uh, the page layout and Google's. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Google's just seeing something there, and <sighs> it'll be in the page somewhere. Yeah, I actually looked at this. It, it did actually. Um have um, this on, on the page. Uh, it, it wasn't um, pagination because it was 12 to 18. The, your first thought is to think of pagination, but it, 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 it isn't. Um, and it, it was um, um, mentioned in the, um, it was on the, the left hand menu column. Um, but the way that it had been displayed on the site had no relevance to anything. I'd like to point out people like Stockbridge uh, Truslow who uh, answer questions um, um, on our uh, Facebook group through the week. Truly grateful. Right, let's uh, move on to number four in our run list. Um, this one from John Vertigo. Um, it's titled, Why Can't I Put Text in the Header? A web designer has asked me why we cannot or do not put text in the he header. For example, a sentence with the purpose of the website, or a sentence with the purpose of the website above um, the main menu. Are there any answers? Uh, you can do. I mean, tons of sites have um, their little branding in the top there. I mean, you, you don't want to chuck a paragraph in, like across page to page to page to page. But, I mean, literally, you're, you know, I mean, yeah, you can do. There's nothing wrong. Like, I think Nike has just do it on theirs. Yeah, it's not an issue. You know, if that's your if that's your branding, do it. But don't chuck a paragraph in across all site. You know, that's just weird. Um, yeah. I'm looking at the comments of that question, uh, Tim, and I see Andy Wigglesworth is. Um appear is appearing there yeah but i i um um i saw andy yesterday he's doing where, where, well where were you there in doncaster oh i went up i went up for a meeting yesterday yeah yeah he's all right he's doing well Okay. Have we answered this for John Vertigo? I think so. Okay, let's go. 
Um, Scott Clark has a question for us. It's titled Switching to Another Content Management System. Uh, Scott goes on to say, uh, I'm considering the migration of our 15-year-old Amazon Web Services hosted uh, Cloudflare enhanced WordPress site, brackets our bread and butter, to a flat file content management system um, in hopes of uh, getting rid of bloat. Um, it is now scoring C's on Pingdom, a popular um, testing service. While we're uh, waiting um, for others, uh, I'd just like to uh, chip in my two cents and say to Scott th that um, Google only uh, indexes uh, um, what the um, um, user can see. Uh, if it's not visible to uh, the average user, Google is not interested. Um, so, um, you know, whether you, what what uh, CMS is not going to affect your paid speed in any uh, uh, way, shape, or form. Uh, you, it, it it won't um, it it won't help your paid speed the paid speed of your site to change change your CMS. Um, I, I I did read the, the uh, questions. Um, over time, people add plugins, and you're probably guilty uh, as, as as I am. Um, you add plugins, and they over time uh, they they add more and more work uh, for WordPress to do just to load the page. Um, I'm sure if if you were to um, get rid of um, all of the plugins and replace them with some custom writing or better uh, upgraded plugins. Um, also, uh, the uh, version of um, um, WordPress, um, you might be still on version 5, uh, um, whereas version 7 is much faster than uh, version 5. Um, anything else uh, on this one, guys? No, the, the only other thing I can think of uh, would uh, Scott would be to um, look at um, who you're hosting with. It might be that um, over time um, um, your Amazon Web Services uh, um, hosting is um, throttled in some way, shape, or form. Um, it might be that. Um, um going to uh, a, a, a more bulletproof host uh, uh, spending a little bit more money um might uh, give you what you're looking for anyway let's move on from number five uh, i hope um, my small contribution is uh, useful to you scott all right, our first, uh, sorry, uh, our next question, number six on our run list uh, for Nazman Naha. Um, how does Google treat a subdomain and a root domain? Um, and um, yeah, Nazman said, hey guys, can anyone advise please? If we receive backlinks to a subdomain, Will our articles published on our regular domain profit from these backlinks? Um, will our DR, um, what's, the, what's DR um, an acronym for, guys? Oh, I'll read it out there. So R will be for rank. But what kind of rank, I don't know. Okay. D is for domain. 
Okay, yeah, domain root. Um, how will Google treat the subdomain and the um, root domain? And that's the question. Well, Googlebot treats a, a, a subdomain um, the same as it, it treats um, your um, root domain because you, your root domain is uh, a subdomain of your uh, um, top level domain. Um, so yeah, the, the, any any form of um, domain uh, is is treated by Googlebot um, uh, it, 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 as, as as having the same the, the same strength, if you like. Um, so uh, it, you know, it links from your. Uh, um, subdomain to your uh, root domain um, will be um, just as useful as in internal linking uh, on your uh, root domain, um, like your menu linking. Anyway, any any other comments on this one? I can't think of anything more useful to say, uh, Nazmun. Uh, I hope. Uh, that's enough for you. All right, number seven on our run list from Rodrigo Bueno. Um, it's titled Duplicating My Site with a uh, No Index Tag. Uh, Rodrigo said, gentlemen, uh, if I duplicate, duplicate my website and config the copy as no index, does it offer risk? to the main website. Um, in other words, he's saying if I put the content uh, on a different domain on the, the same hosting uh, as uh, the uh, root domain. Well, look, um, um, I, I just wonder why you would want to do this. Um, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think um, configuring um, the, the copy as no index um, um, is, is useful. I mean, Googlebot um, is going to be continually crawling uh, this um, um, subdomain uh, or this this other um, domain um, consuming um, uh, resources and um, making your because it's on the same hosting it's going to make your main uh, um, primary domain uh, um, necessarily slower um, I, I don't think it's a good idea at all um, I, I don't think it's useful. Um, I don't understand. Maybe, can anybody else see something there? Well, I suppose it's for staging or developing or, you know, beta site. If, if he's, for example, he has a live site and he's trying to change something and want, only wants to do it in, um, as, as beta or development side. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Well, look. All, all we can say to Rodrigo is, um, if this um, answer is is not um, enough for you, um, please ask it again in a different way, and we'll endeavour to uh, provide a better answer. Does that sound fair enough, Mr. Taki? Yeah, I think so. I think I think we need to know why he wants to do it. <laughs> I think yeah. there must be a reason why he wants to duplicate the site. So if you know for what purpose, then our answers might be slightly different. Yeah, yeah because if if he, 
if you would want visitors on that site, then there is a chance that somebody links to that no indexed site and that link is then lost. So canonizing or redirecting could be a better option than no indexing if he wants visitors on that site. Okay, moving on to number eight on our run list. It's from Peter Magnuson. Um, Peter asked a question titled, I forgot to turn on no index while developing uh, my new site. Um, I developed my new site on a subdomain, so it started ranking. Um, now I have killed it and moved it to a real domain, but I can still see the old site when I Google. I turned on redirect for the subdomain to the main domain so that uh, old links will take you to the main domain. Um, should I do uh, anything else? Well, he could check if it's a 301 and not a 302 redirect because He's talking about switching on and some hosts still like to do that with 302 and that wouldn't help him very much in short term. So he should make sure it's a 301 redirect. Right? Um, I've I wouldn't necessarily use have used a, a redirect um, because in a sense Googlebot is still going to come back to that to check if that redirects in place which means that URL is going to be in place for however long it thinks that that still needs to be there. I personally would remove those redirects. I would then set up a search console for that testing domain that you used and you can via search console just literally request removal of them thank you tim anybody else Just like to point out uh, Jason Munn um, answering um, in the comments uh, of this question. Justin Major and uh, Clint Butler, uh, Peter Magnuson uh, asked the question and uh, uh, these guys uh, were good enough uh, to uh, Answer it. Um, Bill Hartzer, um and uh, answered uh, one on this one. Rizwan Pasha also offered an answer, but I'm not sure if taking a cup of coffee and waiting for Google to do the rest is an effective strategy. I can't see that working. Anyway, thank you, Rizwan. Thank you, Linesman. Thank you, ball boys. Um, let's go to number nine on our run list. It's from Jim Carroll. Um, the structure of the image alt text um jim said hello experts and fellow dumb questioners um on the product pages of an e-commerce site i have several images per product what's the best way to structure the image alt text and should i use the same words for each image associated with that product Well, 
So I would try and best describe. So, so you typically have that if it's like, let's say, a chair. So your main, your the main image, your featured image. I would so, for example, let's say it's um, an aluminium uh, garden chair. Your, you know, your file name on that would be aluminium garden chair or buy aluminium garden chair, you know, it's entirely up to you. Um, and then, you know, the alt on that would be aluminium garden chair and then brand it from, you know, whatever company. Um, then I would literally for the next one actually say what it is. It's like side view aluminium garden chair. Um, close up of, um, you know, fixtures for aluminium garden chair accurately you know describe that because those product images are the side the back the front close up of the nuts and bolts or whatever the case may be but so define what your actual product is firstly in your featured image aluminium garden chair and then from there um you know then define what it is of the aluminium garden chair um i think that's the easiest way instead of getting too clever with anything um, you're accurately describing it. You've defined what your featured image is, and these are additional images to help the, the user. So, yeah, you know, don't, don't try and get too clever with it. Just try and, you know, describe it. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's uh, move on to uh, our uh, last question for the evening. This one from JLo um, on using a content distribution network to deliver images. Jano said, hi everyone. Recently I heard that using a CDN or content delivery network to deliver images uh, might be an, might be an SEO in terms of visual search since it is not on my server and Google doesn't support image cannot canonicalization he said i wonder if using a content delivery network to deliver images can be a uh, uh, um, problem let me know your thoughts thank you well no you know cdns has become you know cd cdn has become very popular to reduce the the load on the site, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know what you mean about canonicalizing them. Um, uh, depends on your CMS. Um, depends on your CMS and how they're actually set up. And uh, also I'm guessing your CDN would depend on how Google associated the image with the particular uh page on site um i think you need to just double check with whatever cdn you look at um i personally don't know of any that have really cocked up uh in that way i'm guessing there are out there um but i haven't come across that that issue um, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a popular way of delivering images. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, and it makes a, a whole lot of sense uh, to use uh, the content delivery network because it puts the, the server, um, closer to the the um, user and it, it makes a, a faster internet i'd like to thank um Mar michael martinez and jim robinson for their uh, um excellent answers uh, to this question and others uh, um on our uh, um could i just jump in here yes sure go ahead um sort of i got confused by the canonicalization question. Um, so I assume that he is using a CDN where you where the um, the domain would be the CDN's domain, right? 
so the image is hosted on the CDN. Um, and I suppose what he's saying is that um, the CDN canonicalize, or does it canonicalize the um, the image file URL to the original server with the domain? Yeah, it attributes it as as the, the, like the source. So, if you did like a uh, an image search of, for example, let's say this particular image, or you know, you you did an image search or, or query in the image, you would see it attributed to that article yeah. or that actual domain rather than the CDN's domain. Um, yeah, so it's the, it, because in the image search, the associated um, web page would be from you know the domain, so it would be um, from the original domain, as it were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not not yeah. the CDN. Yeah, yeah, and obviously it makes sense to have the CDN image um, in the search results because that it it'd be faster anyway, and if um, someone clicks through, then this, the image would be served by the CDN in any case, right? So you, you, in this case, you do want to have the CDN image um, indexed in the image search. And it is true that Google doesn't um, um, doesn't observe image canonicalization. Um, I have this issue, well, it's not an issue, but I noticed that with uh, page speed, more page speed. So um, there are various um, images of the same image in the image search, one sort of the unoptimized and the one another that is optimized by mod page speed and both are um, both are uh, indexed even though the optimized image does have a canonicalization header. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, if if um, there are no further answers, um, let me click this button, and I think I'll see. Yes, it's um, a thank you for watching time. I'd like to thank all of the people who answered questions on our dumb SEO questions Facebook group and. Let's hope that somebody will um, um, participate uh, in um, Twitter and find our response in Twitter. Uh, um, we're certainly going to make sure that we publish, it in, uh, publish our response on Twitter, so feel free to ask us a question. Um, I'd like to thank um, Masataki Wasa, Tim Kappa, Rob Mars, um for uh, um their valuable uh, con con contribution uh, tonight and uh, um all all of those weeks i don't know how many years it's been but um um we've certainly uh, um cemented our place in history on 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 the messio questions all right let's um um, close off now. We'll be back uh, at the um, same time next week. Um, but um, for now, um, it's good night.